Hello and welcome back to another episode on the road to the Gun Builders World Cup. This is episode 7 and today I'm going over airbrushing my petite guy. Now if you haven't seen my previous video on priming, I would highly recommend it as I go into great detail about troubleshooting issues when painting with an airbrush. I'm not really going to repeat that in this video, so instead I'm just going to go over my experience while painting, as well as showing you the progress of my petite guy and the progress of my Gun Builders World Cup. So if you would like to see that video, I have linked it in the description below. Massive disclaimer right now, I did muck up a bit back when my partner and I bought our paints. Well, we both mucked up because we decided to pre-thin the paints in their jars, as I explain in this clip right now. You get your jar and it'd be filled up to about here and then you'd fill the rest up with thinner and shake it together. That is poor practice, don't do that. Yeah, so after filming this, I literally went through and marked everything I thought had been pre-thinned. So don't do it as you can't take that thinner back out and you may not remember how much you've thinned something. Plus you just don't get this nice smooth texture with the paint and it just causes more issues than anything. To paint my petite bear guy, I'm using the Mr. Color number 68 Red Matter Gloss Paint, as well as the Mr. Color number 1 White Gloss Paint, and the Mr. Color number 109 Character Yellow in Semi Gloss. I'm already going to say this now that at times when airbrushing, I thought I was going way too thick, so I started to hold back how much paint I was using. So in the end, I didn't really get the glossy effect from the red paint that should have shown through. After top coating, everything seemed more semi-gloss, so it had all evened out in the end, even with me using semi-gloss and gloss paint, but it is something for you to keep in mind when airbrushing depending on the effect you want, especially if you want a full-on gloss look. You may be able to fix this up though when top coating with a super glossy top coat, but again, do some testing to make sure you're going to get the effect you want. So tip number one, funnily enough, is don't go too light on the paint. I would suggest doing multiple coats for the best result as you still need to be cautious to not use too much paint as it will build up and you might get drips and also you need to remember you still need to fit your pieces back together. Tip number two is that I always suggest before you paint on your model is to do a test paint on something like a plastic spoon to make sure you have the right colour as well as the right consistency so your airbrush isn't going to block up as much. This will also help you troubleshoot when using new brands of paint as well. However, this doesn't mean your airbrush won't start clogging up, so remember my tips from my priming video to get the best results from your airbrush. Tip number three is to begin with a 50-50 ratio of thinner to paint and then add more thinner as needed. But remember, there is a point where you'll be adding too much thinner so something else may be wrong if splattering is happening or coverage is not. Also remember, you might want to use something like a leveling thinner to stop your paint from drying so quickly. In this instance, I use 0.3 needle head but for tip number four I would suggest definitely using a 0.5 needle head or something larger than that to cover the larger areas more effectively and you also will have less clogging of your airbrush. Tip number five, remember to mix your paint in batches to avoid it drying and to mix it in the airbrush well every so often by creating that vacuum effect I showed you back in my priming video. Tip number six, I still recommend buffing everything down with a microfiber cloth or a makeup pad as it will help remove any dustier particles from your model and if you have some obvious thicker bits of paint that you messed up on, you can always do the wet sanding technique and carefully remove that little bit of layer of paint that you don't want. This way you don't have to redo your whole piece. Now I feel I need to show you this next clip as it is an instance where things were going wrong and where I learned how to troubleshoot my problems with the airbrush. So here it is. Now, as you know, the airbrush was stuffed yesterday. It was not working well, it wasn't happy. So as I showed before, we pulled the whole thing apart, cleaned it out, put a new needle in, a new little um, nozzle headpiece in, We've re-screwed it together and I think the main issue was the needle. So at some point, when cleaning the nozzle piece with the cotton bud and thinner, someone, and I'm not going to say who because there's a couple people who use this airbrush, um, the person didn't pull back 
the top of it to pull the needle all the way back when they were cleaning and therefore they were bluntening the needle. So it wasn't necessarily bent but it was definitely blunter than before. I couldn't really see it and so someone else actually had to have a look at it and went yeah it looks a bit blunt. So we changed that. We also changed the nozzle because it's possible when we cleaned it out the first time that when we put the needle back in we may have split the nozzle a little bit. So we just decided to change it all. We got plenty of spare parts. They're really cheap to buy. So we thought we just changed the whole lot to double check. Another possibility is that this piece here, we'd screwed it on a bit too tight or maybe a bit too loose and it wasn't working the way it should. So now we've seen it got in a good place and putting the, uh, was it the Vaseline inside or the petroleum jelly, it's made it much nicer to use the airbrush. So, we're actually really hoping that the red's gonna come out really well today and we're not gonna have any more problems. So we are done with painting for today. I have painted the red onto the petite bear guy. I've also painted the white, which isn't pure white. It's got a little tiny bit of black in it, so it's more like gray. It looks so much like the primer color that it was really hard to judge and paint it because I didn't know where I was painting. However, I'm pretty sure I've got a layer of it on there so that I can then put more white on top so that we got some highlights and some more shading. Now, the white that I was using, however, unfortunately, is one of the old whites that my partner and I have been using that we used to pre-thin everything. When I thinned it out, it was way too thin. Then I had to keep testing and trying and I wasn't getting the smooth texture I was getting with the red so it was a little bit awkward and it was much harder to see obviously being the, nearly the exact same colour as the primer. So you know it turned out okay, um, they look alright, I am going to buff them down a bit more to hopefully get rid of a little bit of the roughness that came with them. And really that is the end of this video guys, I must apologise as I didn't really get you a close up of the red and how it looked on all the pieces to show you the ones that were more glossy compared to the ones that weren't as glossy but here is one of the pieces I was testing some masking on and you can see it came up more semi gloss than gloss as with this one I held back how much paint I was using on it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, put them below. In the next episode, I'll be covering top coating, which ended up being the hardest thing so far. So stay tuned to my journey on the road to the Gundam Builders World Cup.